Hi folks, I got an interesting video today and it's about one of the most fundamental points of astrophotography. It's the epoch uh, that you're working with. And uh, I would say this is as important as uh, your polar alignment and uh, uh, depending on how uh, things work out for you because uh, uh, I recently discovered that my software was uh, not exactly speaking in the same epoch as uh, some of my other software. So uh, to point, make a point, uh, uh, when you're taking images in, in uh, astrophotography, you like to center your target. And if you don't get the epoch right, um, they're gonna be off-centered kind of like I am right now. And um, you, uh, you don't want that. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna show you uh, on a simulator what's going on and, uh, and why it's important. And uh, even though, um, as you know, it may, as you may know it's due to precession of the Earth's uh, axis uh, in the, uh, in the like, celestial sky. And um, that happens like uh, on a periodic nature of about 28,000 years. Um, so it sounds very slow, but in fact, uh, it's very fast when you're trying to uh, target images uh, with high magnification telescopes and uh, even a moderate magnification telescope. So let's get into that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is sh show you uh, how the uh, procession looks and uh, I'll show it to you on Sky Safari. And I'm gonna, I've got it set up here for uh, 1956, January 1st at 1 a.m. So dark, dark, and approximately my birthday. And uh, <clears throat> so if I run this, I got it uh, at three months per, per uh, update. And you will see how the procession affects the North Cilicia pole. So <clears throat> keep your eye on this and relative to Polaris. And I'll stop it when it hits today. There we go. It's almost, uh, well, I missed it by one year. Okay, so you can see how much it changes over my lifetime. So let's see how much it's changing uh, from a reference point like uh, the Epoch uh, J2000 to current Epoch or J now. Okay, so this is uh, 1 a.m. Uh, today or tonight. Um, uh, I guess this morning. And we will show and it's using current epoch. So at 1 a.m. this is exactly where Polaris should be relative to the NCP. But uh, as I found uh, my um, astrometry tool was basing it on the year 2000. So uh, if I show the year, if I change this to the year 2000, you can see the uh, movement of the North Celestial Pole. So uh, let's bring up my telescope uh, display. And go back to that. You can see it's centered on Polaris. And I go, I'll use the year 2000. And you can see the NCP moving again. So, uh, but now, the issue is basically you have a you have a planetarium that's telling you your scope uh, to go to some location, but your scope has got those locations uh, based on another epoch, and uh, this can happen because uh, um, when you use a astrometry to uh, align your scope. It's it's take you take a picture, it finds out what the uh, location is, the exact location, and then it tells you sync your mount to that and say, okay, my mount is looking at this point in the sky exactly, and uh, it law and it puts it as a reference point, as an alignment point, 
but uh, what I discovered was the astrometry was basing it on J2000, so um, it wasn't current. And uh, so I would align my scope based on J2000 coordinates, and uh, then I would tell it to go to an object with tools such as uh, Safari, Sky Safari, and it would be using J now, and it tells it to go to a certain uh, right ascension declination, and it's different. It's different from the from uh, what was in the alignment. So, uh, for example, I can simulate that here, and I can just say, okay, say I align my my uh, my scope up uh, in some fashion, and then the uh, like a command comes in to move it to another point that's used in different epochs. So I'll use a different epoch here. And you can see that Polaris changes its position in my screen. Okay, so that doesn't look so bad because this, you know, there's a star in the screen and uh, it's moved a little bit, and you could, see, you could still see the star. And if you you would just uh, if you were observing, you would just simply command your uh, scope over or push it over, or whatever. But in astrophotography, you need to uh, you need to um, do guiding you might have to do a meridian flip and you want to, to you kind of audit you're trying to automate these things you're trying to come back to the point where you were and uh and, and do more guiding and uh, you want to so you want to be going to exact position all the time and uh and and, and of course even from the start and in this case you can't even get it from the start so let's go to uh andromeda one everybody's favorite and uh, it will show distinctly the problem. So here we go. This is say you've uh, aligned your scope up with your astrometry and you go, oh, well, my, I got my astrometry set for J2000. Um, uh, if you say, you know, uh, in my case, it was, I had to research to find that it was at J2000. I didn't say so, so uh, I, I found this out by research. Um, if you use AstroTortilla, for example, I believe they have a way, they have a setting where you can choose. Uh, so in my case, I didn't have that. So I have my scope uh, aligned with uh, uh, the system based on J2000. And then I come along and I tell the uh, scope to move to, based on Sky Safari, which uses the current epoch and um, there you go. It's way off, and this is a terrible framing of your uh, your target. And uh, so you you can't properly frame or you know this uh, this target, and you have to manually move it. And suppose you have a meridian flip, um, you're going to have to manually move it again because you, you just can't. You, you, nothing nothing is centered. So it's a big problem in astrophotography and. Uh, it's got to be uh, it's got to be something that you get get right. So this is why it's as important as uh, as polar alignment. Uh, I mean, you can still do uh, imaging and stuff, but there's a lot of manual intervention required. You have to reset your your position, and uh, and uh, if you do a meridian flip or a focus, you go away to a star and kind of try to come back and do a go away to a star focus, and you try to come back. It's it's off again, and you have to manually move it again. So it's a really, uh, it's a really important thing, and um, it's something you may or may not run into, depending on how integrated your tools are. So um, that's what I wanted to show you, and I hope you like it, and uh, hope it helps.